So we're going to do some monotypes using clothing and two different monotypes. So we're going we're to do put the paper about two or three times to the press and we're going to create like a little negative of the clothing. They're going to look just like x-rays. So I kind of stumbled into this process during grad school and I was working on my thesis and I was doing color graphs and color graphs was very like stiff. I wanted to be more random so I can move the clothing different positions. I did some ghost monotypes. When I graduated, I was a painter. I would paint. I started painting in high school. And when I got into college, uh, back then it was UTV TSC. Now it's gone. Oh, it's merged. It's still there, yep. but it's under, a, it's now a UTRGV. I was in UTB now, and I graduated at UTRGV. In the printmaking classes, I always was given at night from 7 to 10. So I was like, I still am taking printmaking. I think my last year, I decided I had to take printmaking. <laughs> That's when I got into printmaking. I started doing mixed media print printing on canvas, printing and painting on them. And one thing that printmaking taught me is to slow down. So I like more experimental printmaking. In my work, I, I do traditional, but in my conceptual work, I do a lot of experimental. You like the surprise of it. Yes. And, and speaking as a printmaker, I don't like surprises. I like to know exactly what it's going to look at. So I would call you an explorer. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, I like the surprise. It's a, it's a Christmas. You don't know what you're going to get. Sometimes <laughs> uh, when I choose my clothing, I'll go yeah. and look at the texture of the clothing. Corduroids, it's not good for this. I tried it. It's spongy <laughs> and it does not work for this process. In grad school, I did a, like about 50, 60 of these monotypes. So this is the first layer. Solid yellow. Solid yellow. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, make a slab for the black and I'm going to ink it black, the whole plexiglass. And then I'm going to add the clothing, put it to the press, remove the clothing, and then I use some paper towels to remove some areas. So this is where that paint reading part comes in, when you're removing, adding and subtracting the ink. See what you're gonna do here. So I, I need that randomness. As up and downs, we have to switch the pressure because it's not any more flat. Yeah. It's not flat surfaces. Negative piece. Wow. This is just a negative piece. So I'm not going to use this. What I'm going to use is what's going to be left over from the pixel oh. glass. I just want to see if there's enough pressure because the there's lettering in the clothing and that transfer to the plate. Yeah, it transfers. Wow. So now what I do next, I get some, some uh, towels. So with the yellow, it's going to create a more contrast and pop out more of the shirt. Okay. okay. See, make sure, check my work. Good? Yeah, yeah. It's good. Remember, we're on random. It's all right. Yes, yeah, so. I like randomness, but that's fine. That's fine. Oh, uh, yeah. Ooh, that's, that's kind of wild, man. <laughs> That's awesome, Jesse. So the next one should get be more darker because I'm adding more ink to the plate. Okay. Much better. This is much better. Wow, that is that was nice. So there's more there's more inking involved, like the second layer of ink I put on, so it has more ink. Yeah. So it looks more like an X-ray yeah, print. Awesome. So this is more of an uh, organic way, experimental way of printmaking, where you just 
It's more like the surprise of it. Usually what I do, it's I go with a Q-tip and clean everything. So I do a bunch of this, of this ones, and I go, okay, I choose. Okay, this one's just nice. It is nice. Not this one. Okay. I think we get sick around if you wanted to finish your other two. All right, Jesse. Thank you. <laughs>